our new episode, History of Science, brought to you by Brilliant.org and hosted by the world's youngest laureate, Saborno Isaac. Aristotle had a lot of ideas as well, some a bit closer to our actual reality than Dali's. He also is largely remembered for his views on heliocentrism and being one of the pupils of the great philosopher Socrates. Get the ducks to tell you one of the ideas, specifically this guy. Alright, I just heard what he said. Uh, I'll translate it from duckish to humanist. One of Aristotle's ideas was the idea of impetus, which is, was a sort of hidden energy in balls or any object. And when you push an object, it gave them more impetus. But here's the cat. They lost impetus on will, and they were, would stop because they were tired. They have still had impetus. They had a lack of it. Kind of like how you get tired from after running for a while. You can still run, but it, it's very tiring and it's very hard to do. So Aristotle essentially thought that objects became tired, which was not the case, right? This could be counted as objects. However, these uh, not all objects get tired and stop moving. For example, you have this rock over here. And so, if I throw it, Aristotle would have said that it stopped moving because it lost its impetus. As the idea that an arrow or any object moving in the air, like for example, this rock, which propelled, whoa, <laughs> that's not food, little ducky. And Aristotle thought that when an arrow or any object in the air moves, it's because the air uh, in front of it splits and comes back to propel it from behind. Now the air comes back to split is true, but the air comes from behind, not as true. Also, he saw two kinds of motion. One was a stone. One was natural motion, like that of a falling stone. And one was unnatural motion, or artificial motion, you could say. And that motion was something like that of a throne stone. But most notably, his ideas consisted of heliocentrism. Basically states that everything orbits around the Earth. Kind of an epitome of human selfishness. But that was the idea of geocentrism. And he was one of the main proponents of it. And so, he, he, his ideas were modeled by Ptolemy around 400 years after he died. And so, Ptolemy modeled his ideas by saying that the Earth was at the center, like always, and the first orbital around it was the moon. Then after that was the sun, and then the five planets, and then came the, all the fixed stars. Fixed, meaning that they don't move in any way at all besides being rotating in respect to the Earth. It was not the most accurate model, at least in our model of the universe currently. But we still remember him because he left that impact on science and started to raise that discussion even though it was an incorrect idea that started that flame, that spark of scientific discussion, especially about the orbitals and the planets, that uh, we still remember Aristotle. He, even though he had an incorrect idea, he sparked that conversation about orbitals and how the true, and how the true nature of orbiting was. It's kind of like a question on a forum like Quora or some other forums that I can't think of right now. They just don't come to my mind, you know. It's why we remember Aristotle and sort of Ptolemy. And now, uh, that sparked the conversation, as I said. For, not for 1400 years though. Why? Because it's kind of like when only one answer is posted on a forum and then that forum just goes silent for the next 15 years. And because the Christian church ruled that it was a true theorem or a true theory. Why? 
because it followed scripture and the Bible and the Old Testament. Neocentrism was obviously not true, but one nobody bothered to observe, which I just recently found out that people thought that uh, back then that observation was not required in order to make theories, which just breaks my heart into a million pieces. But mm, also, if the Christian church rules something, you don't want to go against it because the Christian church was one of the biggest things at that time. And if you were in an area where the Christian church had jurisdiction and violated their rules, you would immediately be condemned a heretic. And that's why one man, Nicolaus Copernicus, published a manifesto for heliocentrism that disproved geocentrism and added proof a bit for heliocentrism. There were many advocates of heliocentrism before him. However, he was the first to provide evidence for his claim. All others were just speculating. They wanted to be different. We will get to the discussion about Copernicus next time. Bye, guys. Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.